Well, hi everyone. Uh, today's Thursday, and so it has to be the 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Thursday the 15th of April. Glad to be with you. Again, uh, we're studying the prayers of the Old Testament as they occur in Scripture. We're in the book of Genesis and praying, uh, praying. we're reading through the book of Genesis to find the places where the people of God went to God in prayer. Uh, today, we're in chapter 22. This is the testing of Abraham's faith. What's interesting about this story is you have communication, prayer, between a human, Abraham, and between God, God the Father. But the human doesn't say much. This is fascinating because in most prayers, especially those recorded in Scripture, we hear from the human their prayer to God, not the other way around. But in this prayer, we hear more from God than we do from Abraham. And maybe more importantly, we hear a very faithful response from Abraham. So let me, instead of reading the whole story, tell you the story. The very beginning of 22 and verse 1, God calls out to Abraham. Abraham, God says. Here's the first reply of Abraham. Three words. Here I am. Here I am. Then God begins the diatribe. Abraham, I'm going to test you. I want you to take your son Isaac. I want you to take him to the place that I'm going to tell you that he's going to go. And I want you to sacrifice your son, your only son, who, by the way, is the fulfillment of my promise to you to make you a great nation, to give you uh, descendants numbering more than the stars. And there I want you to sacrifice him to me. Uh, a, give him as a burnt offering. I want you to, uh, by fire, sacrifice your only son, Isaac. The rest of the story goes on. Uh, Isaac uh, is put upon a donkey. And Abraham walks out with his servants, goes away from his servants, prepares this altar, and uh, puts Isaac on the altar. Isaac is uh, bound, wood sitting on a, a heap of wood. And Abraham, again, what has been his prayer? Here I am. We hear nothing else from Abraham. That's it. He's just doing what, what God has asked him to do. He takes out his knife to uh, slay, offer a blood offering of Isaac, uh, which would be normal practice with an animal. But instead of an animal, Isaac would be slain here. And it is at that point that God finally stops him and says, Abraham, Abraham. And so now here's Abraham's second reply again. The same three words, here I am. God says to him then in 22.12, do not lay a hand on the boy, do not do anything. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your only son. Wow, <laughs> what a story. And so, that is the sum total of Abraham's communication to God when God tests him. There's a lot to learn here, obviously. The first thing is we learn from Abraham's faith. You know, prayer is as much listening to God and being faithful to God as he speaks to us in prayer as, is, as it is speaking ourselves. Yeah, there's intercessory prayer where we intercede on behalf of others, asking God to act in their favor. There's individual prayer where we go before God and we can uh, ask for things, supplication, or we can go before God and complain, lament. We can, um, there's a whole host of 
prayer, in individual prayer. But most prayer, and especially most prayer that's captured in Scripture, is prayer of the individual. And, and even in corporate prayer, we're, we are saying the words. But here, God's saying most of the words. And what's Abraham doing? He's responding by faith. I can tell you this with certainty. I would not act as Abraham did. I really believe <laughs> that I would have run from God at this point. I, if God said, take your son Zeke or Nate and sacrifice them to me on an altar as a blood offering and then a burnt offering, I'm pretty sure I would say, nope, we're done here. <laughs> That's asking too much of me. I think, because it's only human, that Abraham thought to himself, Lord, you're asking too much. This is just way beyond anything I'm willing to do. And yet he didn't say it. He, he's human. He must have thought it. And I'm sure it would have been captured here in Scripture, but it's not. This time, Abraham does what the Lord asks him to do. I'm wondering if this is growth in Abraham. Remember Abraham's previous prayers? Uh, they didn't reflect on him so, so well, did they? Uh, some of them went like, God, I don't have any children. Or laughingly, God, Am I going to give birth to a child at 100 years old? Uh, am I going to make that happen? And Sarah's 90? I mean, these are the prayers that we've seen in Abraham. But now, uh, close to death and close to Sarah's death, well along in years, Abraham has grown in prayer. I think, friends, this is a, a, a great testimony to what is available to us as we grow in years and mature in faith and as we continue this life of prayer in and through Christ Jesus. I would hope that when God asks us to do something terribly ridiculous and painful, that as we grow in faith, we might be able to pray back to God, here I am and do his will. Something to think about, something to consider. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for this time together, for this beautiful day. Bless us in it. Uh, lead us, Lord God, into a, a deeper, a richer, more fulfilling life of faith through prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Love you, friends. Miss you. It's been great to be with you. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.